Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with a new quilt top. The entire world has made quilts using the disappearing nine patch block. I have not yet, so I am going to do it. I specifically ordered black and white fabrics because I thought it would look cool and so far I absolutely love this. I want to tell you that if you want to make the exact quilt that I'm making today, I do have six packets of pre-cuts like this. You would have to follow my pattern exactly and I will show you because there are two of the colors, this dark one and this dark one. You need two blocks per square for this and then the others you only need one. So I have everything you need right here. You can go check out the link down below. These are on eBay as a buy it now item. Hurry up because they might sell out. So this is what we do with this. We set up a nine patch like this that I haven't pressed yet and we cut it this way and this way and then we turn a couple of the blocks that we cut. When we cut it we end up with four blocks and we turn three of them and I will show you how to do that too. You are absolutely free to do this any way you want with your own fabric. I am using five inch squares so if you have a charm pack you can use that. You can make it scrappy by making it all different. You don't have to have a pattern going on. You can turn the blocks that you cut any way you want. I'm doing this one particular way and if you like the way it looks and you want yours to come out the exact same way then you can get one of my packets of the pre-cuts and then do exactly as I do. So let's start with the nine patch. I'm going to try a different angle for the sewing machine so I can show you how I put it all together and um, I'll take a picture right now of the way you want to set it up, the nine patch you can't see I'm pointing over there and you might want to take a picture of it or I'll just take a picture and insert it right now and that's how you're going to set it up I just put my um, pre-cuts out in that order and then I know how each block gets put together and now I just realized that the previous blocks that I made I think I had three put together. This particular one was going this way. See how the lines are vertical right now? They were horizontal. So it gives a little tiny bit of a different look when it gets cut. This is not going to have the lines going this way. It's going to have the lines going that way. That is minor, very minor. And I'm going to just continue making all the rest like this. It's very easy to get screwed up and turned around, so that's why it's important to lay things out. But I took a break between making blocks, and I had to move some things, and you know, I always get into trouble when I take breaks. So what you want to do is take one of each block, and I set it up, I will be moving this stuff, on my sewing machine. I'm going to make the whole entire nine patch block without leaving my machine. I kind of like this angle. At least you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to be putting these together by doing some chain piecing. People do this a gazillion different ways. You do it whatever way is comfortable for you, but for me this is the best way to not get screwed up. Now this one, I'm going to keep it vertical. This is how I wanted it in the first place. So the first three blocks that I made were actually the mistake because when it gets cut and put next to this guy, one will be vertical, the other will be horizontal. So, uh, whatever. Doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. But this is how I have it set up. And this is the orientation of these guys. They're vertical. This is vertical. The others do not matter. There's no right or wrong to the black, so don't worry about that. Now I'm going to just slap this nine patch together, and I'm going to start by doing this. I'm taking this guy and this guy and I'm going to pick up the edge that I'm going to sew and I'm just going to sew right there and I'm leaving it right there and I'm going to do these two now actually it's easier to just flip this guy onto here 
Now at this point, I snip the one. There are some people that leave everything all stuck together and then they put it together that way. I just personally don't like that and I feel like I'm going to get screwed up that way. I'm going to press everything to the dark side. So I put the dark on top, push it back, and I finger press. That's all the pressing I'm doing for this entire block. And now see, this is not right. I do have my, um, you know, my other setup there. So I always can check. So it goes like this. Now I'm going to put these two together. Dark on top. I push the dark back. Well, just the dark. Finger press. And that, I know, goes in the center. I'm going to start finishing this top row. So this goes on here, and I'm sending that through. Putting my dark on top, finger pressing. I'm looking at my sample that you can't see, and it goes this way. You know, which is kind of obvious, dark, light, dark, but I still always check because it's just too easy to get confused. Okay, I'm going to flip this guy onto here and finish this row. Dark on top, finger press. And I check, and it's this way. Now I'm going to finish this row. Okay, this time I'm going to force that seam to go to the dark. Okay, and it's going this way. At this point, I've never cut my thread. I'm going to sew these two guys together. Now I'm going to flip this one here, and I'm going to just pay attention for now to the first intersection. Now they'll nest because we pushed to the dark side. And that looks good. Just going to straighten this out a tiny bit. And so. When I get close to the seams, I'm just going to make sure that they're each going in the direction they're supposed to go in. I'm going to snip this guy off for now. And when I come up to this intersection, I'm doing the same. I want that going that way, that going that way. Now this is the only time so far that I'm using my little tag. Now at this point, I'm going to just press to this side because there's more dark on this side. Doesn't really matter at this point, but that's what I'm doing. And I'm looking over there. This is my top. It's in the right order. And I'm pressing this guy. And this is this way too. The only reason I'm keeping everything in an order is because I'm hoping that the print comes out super cool um, when we're done. Matching up my intersections. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish all the nine patch blocks and then we will do some cutting. I am back. It is another day. I have all my nine patch blocks finished. I'm going to show you how to cut these and turn them. But I wanted to mention if you're doing this with your own fabric, you are going to need 108 five inch squares total. You can use any color combinations you want. That's all up to you. Just remember that the center square is going to be cut into four smaller pieces. And uh, so that, you know, kind of like just gets scattered about in the quilt. It really looks cool. Like even if you do black and white on your own, but you put like a turquoise square in the center, that is going to like really pop. But I went with this. The other thing is, you need 12 of these. It's going to make 12 nine patch blocks. This quilt will be three across by four tall. I'll give you the final measurements when we get there. The other thing, if you happen to get my kit, you're going to get all 108 blocks. You will get 12 of each of the white ones and the solid black. 
you're going to get 24 of this print and 24 of this print. So you'll need to split that into little stacks of 12 each. So when you, you know, put it all together, this is the order right here. And this guy and this guy, you can decide if you want them vertical or horizontal. It doesn't really matter. But I had done some vertical and some horizontal for this one, so I ended up doing six of each, each way. I don't know, it just made me feel better that it was balanced. Stack these all in the exact same order. Doesn't really matter which corner you use as your top, but I'm going to go ahead with this one as you're seeing it. So I'm just going to turn it and move that over there and we'll cut. Before you cut, you just want to look and check out your edges. If you have something very funky sticking out, you can trim that. But I'm not trimming the block down yet. This block looks very good. You know, there's a little bit of unevenness, but I'm okay with that. The easiest way for me is to just fold my fabric and I press it so I have a line to cut on. My particular ruler isn't long enough, and it's just easier than trying to figure out what is, you know, half of four and three quarters of an inch or however big your square ends up being. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fold it this way and press, and then I'll fold it in the other direction and press. When I was pressing everything to the dark, that's because my darks happen to be, you know, like this, four corners and the center. What you just want to do, if you have different color combinations, you want to press this row that way, out. This one in toward the center, this one out. That way everything will nest when you slap it all together. All right, I made some creases, I'm going to cut. All right, here's the turning part. This block, we do nothing to it. This block, we're going to turn once to the right, like that. So the black is at the top now. This one, we're going to turn twice to the right. One, two. So this black is at the corner down here. This one we're turning once to the left. So we're going to make that corner this way. If it's easier for you to remember 0, 1, 2, 3, then let me show you. It works either way. 0, don't turn it. 1, one turn to the right. 2, two turns to the right. 1, 2. And this one, three turns to the right. One, two, three. If that's easier to remember, go with that. But this one, it doesn't matter if you go three to the right or one to the left, you end up with that square in that corner. We're going to sew these back together now. And I'm going to do that to all of the nine patch blocks. I do want to mention that even though there are probably a hundred different videos out there that show this exact way of turning the blocks, there's a lot of ways to turn the blocks. But I happen to see Donna Jordan do this from Jordan Fabrics, and I liked the design, so I just want to give her a shout out. She does not know I exist, but that's where I saw this combination and I saw the finished look and I liked it. And I'll link to her video down below in the description box. I have all 12 blocks done. So excited. I have them separated only because I have six where this print is horizontal and six where it's vertical. I thought I'd just spread them out in the quilt evenly. I trimmed my blocks to 12 and a half inches. I probably could have gotten them a little bit bigger, but that was an easy number. Just remember when you trim, you need to trim an equal amount on both sides. So what you can do is just take a block and lay it on your cutting mat and just put this line on a line and then count out and see what works for you. Um, I would just count six and a quarter and trim, six and a quarter and trim, so that gave me twelve and a half this way. I would turn it and do the same. Very easy. 
I'm going to uh, put these together now. Here's the deal. We want them to be all in the same direction. So we don't want to turn them. At least I'm not. I'm going for a particular kind of print where it's supposed to have some diagonal things happening. I'm hoping that works. So I'm going to put each one of them the same way. And then I will be... Yes, I'm seeing. Oh my goodness, I'm looking in the screen. This is awesome. <laughs> and I'm going to do three across and four down. And then you're going to see it on the bed. Here it is. And it's quite small, smaller than I expected, and it's a little bit boxy. I would absolutely like another row attached to it. I did not add a border because I think a border in solid black would be super cool, but it's up to you. Somebody will win this on eBay. I don't have any more solid black, so I'm just leaving it as is. And whoever wins it on eBay can finish it any way they want. The link will be down below. Go check that out. The kits are also available. The quilt will be a penny auction, free shipping for the USA. The kits are a buy it now option. The finished size, since I trimmed my blocks to 12 and a half, that makes the finished sizes of the blocks about 12 inches. It's about 36 wide by 48 tall. So a nice lap size. I just think that it's so super cool. I really like it. Now, just imagine all those little black squares, you know, a different color, hot pink, blue, you know, turquoise, anything. I think it would be so pretty, but any kind of fabric will look cool this way. But I do have that diagonal going on, which is what I was after. I hope you give it a try. I think I'll be making some more disappearing nine patch blocks because I really like, you know, all the things that we can do with them. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll be back with more soon. Bye!